I think uh, it all became rather fortuitous in a way, but I, I found that um, I was rather wanting, once I'd started thinking about Mary McCarthy, I was realizing that she is not, I think, very widely read now, whereas um, for earlier generations, I mean, certainly the people of my age, everybody read her in, in, the, in the, um, the mid and late 20th century. And I, I think that's not so much the case now. I mean, I did a bit of sort of um, um, arbitrary research asking about younger people who I know read a lot, whether they'd uh, ever read her and never even heard of her. Um, whereas, you know, for my generation, everybody had read The Group, which was her first and best known and best selling novel. So I thought, well, you know, how nice it would be in a way if there was a, a Mary McCarthy title out of print. And I found that Birds of America indeed was. Um, so I thought, well, that's terrific because I can use that to try and draw attention again to um, Mary McCarthy. And again, and my other book, which is The Lark by E. Nesbitt, um, I'd wondered, if I'd, I'd been thinking it'd be rather nice to have a children's book, and um, I, I love E. Nesbitt's children's books, but they're happily all very much still in print. But what f few people realise is that she wrote, um, she wrote 11 novels for adults. I didn't know them, in fact, I wasn't at all familiar with them. So we looked at those and thought about this, and I thought, well, actually, that again would be rather nice to draw attention to the fact that. E. Nesbitt, who is known only for her children's books, was also um, a, a writer for adults and, and a, an interesting one at that. It's great fun. It's, a, it's, a, it's called The Lark and it's very entertaining, very much a, a period piece. It's very much of its time. Mm. Um, in my case, with, with Meatless Days by Sarah, Sarah Soleri, it was very much that I wanted people to read that book. I mean, she's written not a lot. I mean, there's one other. Um, but it's one of the most important books of my life, so it, it was really um, a very personal pleasure to be able to to um, be part of bringing it back into the world again. Um, Isma Chukthai was a different story because she's a writer who has uh, quite a breadth of work in short stories, novels, um, an autobiography, essays, all kinds of things. And, and this was just a collection that has both the short stories and the essays, which is a mix I like. Um, and it's, I think, one of the better translations out there because in the case of translated writing, of course, you have to also mm. look at the question of, of the translation itself. Um, and with her, because there is so much, I would hope that people might be interested and, and want to go in and find other works by her. Well, I was uh, extremely interested in Camilla's choices because, of course, I didn't know mm. either of them. And so I was very glad that here was something that was refreshingly you know, new and different and read them, read them with huge interest and, and, and enjoyed them, yeah. So, I mean, I think it was, you know, in a sense, we were, we were a good choice of very different kinds of writers so that we would turn up with, with different kinds of books. Yeah, and, and, you know, because I grew up in Pakistan, I missed E. Nesbitt. Um, and, and so, you know, now I, there's this, but there's also the children's books to go and, and, and find. Um, and, you know, I think I was probably, I'm probably sort of at the tail end of, you know, that, that generation or generations of, of women who knew of Mary McCarthy. Mm, um, mm. But I didn't know of this one. Mm -hmm, um, and, mm. and, you know, it, it's, it's always a pleasure to to go back to writers who were once in your consciousness and have slipped out. Exactly, um, And yes. to go back to them and yeah. in new ways and, and find. Yeah, and you find yeah. something different. I mean, it's just the same, the same way that one, one falls in and out of affection with mm. writers. You know, somebody you love at one point, 10 years later you find you're reading with difficulty. Mm. And, uh, yeah. I think it is much more complicated, yes, because it can also depend on completely sort of um, you know, extraneous things like whether a film's made mm -hmm. of the book, you know, and the book is therefore remembered because there's a film, something like that. Interestingly, I'm not sure that any of Mary McCarthy's books were filmed. I shall probably be proved wrong here. Oh, I think the, the group was. The group was, was yes, it? Yes, I think It, I it would think ask so. to be, actually, yes. yes but I think that's how I first came to know of it, actually. I think there was a oh. not very good... It might have been a TV series or something, mm. and it made me want to go and read. Oh, that's interesting, yes, because you see, I I, I hope I'm not know. making this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would seem to me yeah. surprising if it yeah. hadn't been, mm. actually. Um, I don't, certainly I don't think Birds of America was, and in fact it would be very difficult to make it into a film because it's a slightly plotless novel, it's very much a, a novel of ideas and mm. it's very much an expression of Mary McCarthy's own um, 
sort of worried liberal ideas of, of, of one kind or another. It would be, it would be a very a slightly difficult film. But I mean, to go back to the answer to your question, yes, it is interesting. I mean, you know, the, the, there's a canon that survives and a canon that, that doesn't. And, I, and again, of E. Nesbitt, most people um, would associate E. Nesbitt's children's books just with the railway children because there was a a well-known film of that. Actually, it's the one that, for me, that I like least. I always find it rather sentimental. The ones I love are her fantasy ones, like um, uh, The Samiad and The Would Be Goods and The Treasure Seekers and, and all those. So I think there are, there are kind of odd, um, almost arbitrary reasons why a book sort of becomes canonical and survives in that sense.